Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about all the gear that I took with me on my 2015 thru-hike of the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain. Now, if you don't know about the Camino, it is a hike that starts in France and ends in Santiago, Spain. There's many different ways to cut it. Uh, you can start in many different places, but the Camino Frances, which is the route that I chose to take and uh, the most popular amongst all kind of hikers and tourists, uh, it is 500 miles or 800 kilometers from the Pyrenees in France all the way to Santiago across northern Spain. Um, it was a wonderful trip and not a super uh, vigorous hike by any means, but it was my first experience as a through hiker and one I will totally never forget. Um, I know that in the beginning when I was trying to figure out what the Camino was and what I should bring and what how different it was in a normal backpacking trip, I was so confused. So hopefully some of this information will clear some things up for you. Um, I know a lot of you are probably getting ready to hit your Camino right now because the spring and summer are kind of the most popular times. In 2015, when I did this, I was sort of lost. There wasn't a ton of information. You could kind of find blogs and things like that. Um, by no means, this is uh, a guide to what everyone should carry. Everyone's uh, opinion about what they carry and what they want to carry is very personal, but uh, maybe this can give you a little push in the right direction. So we'll see. Um, to start things off, I brought this pack right here. Uh, it's the Atmos AG65. Uh, at the time, it had just come out and Backpacker Magazine gave it the Gear of the Year award. And I was super excited to have it because I'm a gear nerd and um, I really think that if I were to do this again, I wouldn't bring a pack this big or this heavy. The good thing about this pack though, however, is the suspension on the back is very light and airy. I don't know if you can see, but there is some great mess mesh, which will keep your back um, really comfortable and cool on those long hot days. The other thing I really liked about this pack, uh, especially for something like this, is there are tons of pockets located all around to keep yourself organized. There's a big flap in the front, which you could throw rain jackets in or, um, you know, things that you need to grab quickly during the day. Um, overall, super solid pack. Osprey stands by all their packs with a lifetime warranty. So if you ever have any issues that are not um, normal wear and tear, they will 100% fix it and get it back to you or in a lot of times we'll even replace it. So that's a benefit of buying from a company like Osprey. Um, love the pack, but uh, in terms of overkill, I think it's a little big for what you'd need on the Camino. I would look for a pack that's probably 40 liters or less. Um, so I had like 25 extra liters in here, but that's also because I was carrying photography gear, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, but will in a future video if you guys have any interest. The second thing I want to talk about are hiking sticks. I know a lot of people think it's nerdy to use them. Um, well, you know, if it is, count me on Team Nerd. I love hiking sticks. I will always hike with hiking sticks. It takes a lot of pressure off my knees on downhills. And I think it gives me a lot of stability when I'm hiking and really just helps me keep in rhythm. If you're headed out to the Camino and you don't have hiking sticks, I would highly, highly recommend picking up a set. You can get a cheap pair even at Costco um that are lightweight and will pack down the only thing is you have to check these you cannot take them with you on a plane you can get them uh at the start of the camino and uh from many outfitters along the way so if you don't have a pair and you feel like you need a pair you can find a pair when you get there so one of the things that a lot of people worry about and i know that i worried about personally when i went on my camino was what the bedding situation was in the albergues and although all the albergues are slightly a little bit different um, most of the time it's a basic bunk bed with a pillow and you bring your own blanket or, um, liner like I did, uh, or even like a sleeping bag. I know that most of the people it seemed like probably had a sleeping bag or something like that. Um, me personally, because I went in the spring and summer, all I needed was this little silk liner. This is all it is. Um, the one thing that I did like about this liner and I recommend to everyone is to get a liner that has a pocket in it 
so you can stuff the pillow from the albergue in there. You know, hikers come in sweaty and gross and they do, you know, most of them shower every day, but you're sharing pillows and you know that um, there's all those rumors that some beds will occasionally get bed bugs and you know, it's not a gross thing. They're very clean places, but when you have a lot of people coming in and out and sleeping, uh, sometimes things like that are bound to happen. But one way you can defend that is if you spray your gear down with permethrin. Uh, this is from Sawyer. It works like a charm. I didn't have any worries or any problems with any bugs really um, at all on the Camino. It was um, kind of just that extra layer of precaution that I think I really needed. Um, I don't want to be itching. I saw a couple people that may have gotten bed bugs on the trail, but um, not really a huge deal. Treat your stuff, it'll stay in your gear and in your bedding for several washes. Uh, I it would definitely get you through a full Camino. So Permethrin by Sawyer is the product that I use. I'll link it uh, in the video below for you guys to check out. Um, in terms of something as simple as hydration, hydration, I didn't know if I was gonna need a water filter. I didn't know if I'd be able to buy water, where I should pick up water. Well, the answer is pretty simple um, now. Um, there is water everywhere. I never had a, a problem with obtaining water anywhere. You can drink right out of all the fountains. The water tastes good. There are no issues whatsoever. And all I carried with me was these two. Smart water bottle, one liter. Another one, 700 milliliter. I kept this in a pouch on the front of me. I like to use water bottles because uh, water bottles help me regulate like just by being able to see how much water I'm intaking in a day. Um, generally, I would just fill up the, the smaller one when we'd stop to get water. And this one I would almost carry only like half full unless I knew we were going a longer distance, which generally you will. Um, so that's easy. They weigh like an ounce and a half, super lightweight. Don't carry an algae. I think they're too heavy and kind of ridiculous, but um, you can replace these anywhere. And when you're done, just recycle them. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was clothing. And... Some people take the Camino as more, some people take the Camino as more of like a vacation and they want to wear a couple outfits, which is fine. It just means you have to carry more clothes, but I tend to take a more minimal approach to uh, my packing and it was perfect for me. Um, and I'll share some of that with you right now. Um, I carry Darn Tough Socks. Darn Tough Socks are a company out of Vermont. They have lifetime warranties. When you wear a hole in them, you send them back and they send you a new one. Uh, I had two pairs of these, a long pair and a short pair, and I would just swap them out daily, wash one, wear one. It's pretty much the system that I use for the whole Camino and really no problem there. Like I said, this is a spring summer sort of uh, outfit for me. So uh, the summer sun in Spain is so warm that once you wash and wring your clothes out and throw them on the line, they'll be basically dry in an hour or two and you'll have no problems with clean clothes. Um, in terms of underwear, I took the ex officios and I know that a lot of people think they're too expensive, but think about it this way. If you're only going to have one pair of underwear, you might as well have a good pair of underwear that you can wash and wring out. Um, ex officios are great. They're lightweight, super breathable, anti-odor. They're really top-notch on un <laughs> these are really top-notch underwear and I know underwear. Um, two pairs of these, wear one, wash one, uh, same scenario as the socks. Uh, while I hiked during the day, because like I said, the sun was pretty brutal, uh, I just bought this very thin synthetic shirt. Um, really, I think I just got it at Target. It was very cheap at this point in my packing for the Camino. I was saving pennies and this was one spot that I think everybody could save a little money. I don't think you need to go out and get super high tech t-shirts. Um, I did have one of them. I had a merino wool shirt, which was great because it's anti-odor, keeps you warm when it's cold, keeps you cool when it's warm. Um, but they're a little bit trickier to wash um, and they kind of shrink, so you have to be a little bit more careful with them. Uh, but yeah, most days, long sleeve, thin synthetic shirt paired up with the Columbia Silver Ridge pants. They are super lightweight. Also, these are convertible pants, so you get, you know, shorts with them as well. I prefer to wear them in the, um, in the long pants kind of 
set up. It looked pretty good too if you have to go out to dinner. Um, you know, khaki color. Um, so that's the clothes that I wore on the trail. When I would get to an albergue uh, and shower up and, and wash the dirty clothes away, I would generally change into my fresh underwear, same kind. Uh, darn tough socks, same kind. Um, this is the merino wool shirt. Uh, it has shrunk a little bit on me, so I don't really wear it uh, too much anymore. They're very expensive. They are worth it, I would say, but you just have to treat them a little bit more careful. Um, I also had a synthetic shirt. It was great. Uh, I would hike in this on days that I wanted a short sleeve shirt. Uh, the only downside of these are that they really start to smell pretty bad pretty quickly. So if you aren't wearing deodorant, uh, you're going to smell your pits pretty quick. Um, and then finally... I would wear these little cheapo shorts that I got at a big five before I went. Uh, synthetic, super lightweight, tons of pockets. I think they were like, uh, they were called like rafting or uh, river boat shorts. I don't know, but um, they, were, they were actually really great. I like that they had shorter legs on them and uh, lots of pockets to stuff my passport and wallet and all the things like that in. The last piece of gear that I actually wore was this. It is a buff. Uh, a lot of people don't go for the full buff. I don't go for the full buff either. Uh, I also don't think that you need to buy a super expensive one, but this is one of the most perfect pieces of gear you can have for the reason that it will keep the sun off your neck if you're walking on the back, on the front, and if it gets dusty, a car comes by you, you can put it up, you can cover your ears. Also, when you're in an albergue, cover up your eyes. You know, um, when the lights go on and you want a little darkness. So it's good for a lot of things. Uh, I really enjoy it. I will be always having this piece of gear with me um, on all my hikes forever. It is very versatile and I love it. In terms of sunwear, normal sunglasses, I recommend that you bring like a little pouch to put them in because they will scratch. Also, um, it's, it's important to take care of your eyes when you're out there, just like it's important to put sunblock on. Uh, these are some cheap knockoffs um, that I carried because you, know, you don't want to scratch up a good pair of glasses and they inevitably will get scratched up. Um, when you get to the albergue, it's usually, there's usually like two daily chores. The first one is to do your laundry, which we covered. The second one is to take a shower. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people bring different things to dry off with. I brought this large size pack towel. It's actually made by the company called Pack Towel. It's lightweight. Uh, you could throw it right in the wash to clean it. It's made out of material that dries quickly, so you can just throw it on the line when you're done. And at the end of the night, uh, you just take it in and pack it in your stuff. And that is a tip. Guys, take your laundry in at night because you will inevitably forget something if you don't take it off the line at night. Even if you have to hang it on the outside of your pack in the morning, I'd rather have it than have to hike you know, a mile back to get the underwear I forgot to take off the line at night. Get your stuff washed, get your body washed, dry your stuff out, put it back. Being organized is uh, really important in those big group environments on the trail. In terms of outerwear, you know, traveling in the summer wasn't really a big deal at all, to, and I didn't feel like I needed many extra layers. That's more of like a wintertime thing, but I did carry uh, a very lightweight Nike fleece that I got um, just as like a wrap gift from a television show that I worked on. Um, I also had a like three quarter uh, pair of Nike Pro Combat tights, which I only ended up wearing actually one time on the Camino. And it was one chilly night that the uh, silk liner just wasn't cutting it. But other than that, it was like perfectly fine. And I never had to wear them. Wear them. Um, I would I would carry them again though. I would carry these again because it's nice to have a little extra layer of warmth if you need it and there's not a huge weight penalty there. Um, lastly, I carried the Marmot Precip jacket. It is sort of like a middle of the road jacket. It will definitely keep the rain off you. Um, it has lots of pit zips and things like that to 
kind of regulate your temperature, which is great. Uh, some rain jackets don't have that. And it's also sort of a middle of the road uh, price range. You can find them on online on a sale between 60 bucks to like a hundred bucks. Um, good rain protection I think is worth it. This is the Marmot Precip. Uh, I would actually carry this again. I felt like it was pretty good value. Um, even though I do have an ultralight rain jacket, this is slightly more durable. And when you're not carrying a lot of weight, a little weight like this doesn't really matter that much. I did carry small wet wipes and toilet paper. I never had to use the bathroom on the side of the trail. Some people do. You, you never know when nature calls, I guess, but um, I did keep these in an emergency. Never had to use them. There's lots of towns along the way and anything that you really don't have or feel like you need, you can always pick up. So packing minimally was the key for me. Um, I think it would be the key for a lot of people. There is nothing that you cannot pick up within hours of where you are. So hang in there. You'll hit a toilet. You'll get there. Just lay off the cafes con leche, you know? Um, in terms of first aid, all I had was a couple of little things. I like to use Ziploc bags because I can see everything in them. They're easy to access. Uh, I had Neosporin. I had a needle to pop blisters. Um, and on that category, <laughs> just look up whatever works for you. I'm not, um, I'm not a medical professional. I don't know what's best. I know what's best for me. And I would pop blisters if I had them. Fortunately, I did not. Um, you gotta take care of your feet when you feel warm spots coming cover them up with some tape or a Band-Aid or anything really just to stop that friction. Um, other than that, just had an alcohol pad, a couple of Band-Aids and some earplugs for when people in the albergues are inevitably snoring and sleeping while you're trying to sleep. So I would highly recommend earplugs if you're a light sleeper. Um, additionally, I just had a small tube of sunblock. I like to put it on my face, on my ears, and on the back of my neck. If it, they weren't covered up, uh, generally they were, like I said, so um, this little tube lasted me the whole time. Perfect. Um, I would carry it again. Uh, I also carried a lighter. Um, the lighter was really just to sterilize a needle if we had to pop a blister. Uh, I don't smoke or anything like that, so um, other than that, just always sort of like my the backcountry backpacker me always has a way to create fire, even though totally unnecessary. You were never in that situation where you'd need to. Lastly, and this is probably the most important item of personal hygiene was this small little canister of Gold Bond medicated powder. Every morning before I'd go out, I'd uh, apply it between my thighs. But um, yeah, preventative uh, chafing methods kind of are better than treating chafing when it's already happened. Uh, if anyone's ever had monkey butt before, you know it is a terrible thing and it will happen. So I like to just kind of pre-game a little powder in the nether regions and generally it's pretty good uh, all the time if you preventatively treat that. A couple of the weird items that I might have brought that, that a normal person wouldn't have were things like, I brought a Bluetooth keyboard yeah, I brought a Bluetooth keyboard with me. And what I used with it was this Joby Gorilla Pod. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. Uh, it has a little attachment here that you put a cell phone on. And this is the way that I chose to do my journaling at the end of the day or when we had a stop or anything like that. To me, it was like a mini uh, computer setup and my wrists have pretty bad carpal tunnel after years of holding cameras. So handwriting uh, long amounts of things like really isn't good um, on the wrist for me. And I've had some wrist injuries additionally. So this was my preferred way to get all the notes down. And it worked really well. Compared to a journal like this, uh, it actually only weighs one ounce more. So for one ounce more, I can get all my thoughts down quicker. I know it's less romantic than the old travel notebook, but uh, that's what I did. Uh, I also carried like a small notebook because I think it's good to have a, a little bit of paper and a pen on you. I had a little hand sanitizer just in case you had to pee. 
and you need to wash your hands, or you're about to go eat lunch and the place doesn't have a sink for you to wash your hands, always good to have this. Um, for self-protection, I would carry this bad boy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but this is just a uh, standard issue. Swiss Army Knife actually bought it in France when I landed. Uh, it was awesome. The most important feature of this is the corkscrew, which uh, opened many a bottle of wine on many lunch stops, dinners, breaks. I don't think ever breakfast, but it's good to have a, a wine opener because you're walking through some of the world's best wine regions and you should try it. Other than that, this knife was used to cut cheese and bread and maybe like spread hummus on a piece of bread. So you don't really need any self-protection. It's not scary out there at all. The pack cover to the Osprey bag. Um, I don't carry a pack cover on my other backpack because I use a trash compactor bag and stuff it in there and stuff everything in. And that makes everything dry, keeps everything dry. So in this bag, I have contacts. I changed my contacts about once every four days so I didn't have to bring a ton of them. Um, I also have some eye solution in here, uh, like re-wetting drops. If I do tend to sleep in my contacts, I can re-wet them in the morning. Um, just a travel toothpaste and travel toothbrush, and also a small bottle of Dr. Bronner's soap uh, that I use for washing my body and washing clothes and things like that. It's highly concentrated. So a little goes a long way, which is good when you're carrying everything you own on your back. So one of the last items I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the electronics that I brought on the trip. This isn't um, my photo bag, which is a whole other video for another time, but if you'd like to see it, uh, drop me a comment. We can do a video like that sometime as well. Um, this is more like the things I brought from my phone to keep things charged, stuff like that. Um, I did bring this little three liter Osprey dry bag to keep everything for sure dry. Um, I do trust Ziplocs, but this wasn't one of the instances where I wanted to uh, necessarily roll the dice with those little piece of plastic. This is great, um, keeps water out. What I brought was headphones. I would recommend bringing two. If you lose one or one breaks, you will be without tunes, without podcasts, without books on tape, all that stuff. So I would definitely take two of these. Also, I carry this black diamond headlamp. It is a great headlamp, but it's a little overkill. I have lighter ones that I probably would bring if I was doing it again. Uh, that have easier functionality, turning the red headlamp part on to not disturb people when you're in an albergue and need to turn it on. I'm sure you guys all have these by now, but um, I wanted to talk about these Anchor chargers, um, our battery bank charger. There's tons of them out there. I use Anchor. I think they're really reliable. They have great customer service. And um, this is like a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, which is probably more than you need. I, I carry the 10,000 one. I just can't find it right now. Uh, same exact functionality. Uh, this one has two ports, which is great because you can charge your phone and like a camera battery simultaneously. When you get to the albergues, there's sometimes a rush to get power. Um, and having something that you only need to charge up every few days is definitely a great bonus. Um, I would recommend highly um, Grabbing one of these, carrying along, I think it's worth the weight penalty, especially if you like listening to music and stuff on the trail. Um, lastly, is just the case uh, that I brought for my iPhone. This is a life-proof case, and it's good, keeps dirt and dust out, um, relatively waterproof. If you want to talk on the phone, though, I'd recommend using your headset, because otherwise it sounds a little bit muffly. Uh, did the job, I would probably bring it again just because your phone is basically your communication to the world. It can be navigation, um, entertainment, the whole works while you're out there. It's a, it's a really uh, useful tool that I think you should keep protected. They're also very expensive. So also, um, I wanted to talk about kind of what I wore on my head. I did wear this hat, this is my hiking hat. I love the trucker hat, I will always wear it um, when I can, it has mesh on the back, it's a snapback. Um, this was just a bonus gift from uh, a family's business and it's great but when the sun is beating on the back of your neck sometimes you got to reach for something a little more wide brimmed and that's when this baby came in <laughs> 
it may look goofy, but it does the job. And it's not about fashion out there, at least for me, it's about functionality. Um, this has this flap in the back, which keeps the sun off your neck really well. And when you're walking east to west on the Camino, the sun is at your back all day. So protecting the back of your legs and the back of your neck and the back of your arms is definitely a thing. For me, the back brim was hitting uh, my pack. So I did a little trail surgery and I cut it off. That's about it. Uh, not a lot of gear, but Hopefully a little information that'll help you out in your packing for the Camino. If you're headed out there right now, I wish you the best of luck. It's going to be an incredible time. Don't worry about anything. And if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment. I'll get back to you. And if you like the kind of content I'm producing, please like and subscribe to the channel so we can make more videos like this and hang out and get to know each other more. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the trail.